A new week starts right here, right now, live on the morning after on this Monday, right here on Sports Grid. Sirius XM, channel 159. That's the home for Sports Grid Radio on Sirius XM, all across the Sports Grid network as well. I am Ben Stevens. If you out there, like me yesterday, spent the entirety of your Sunday on your couch watching the NFL Week One slate, you enjoyed yourself very early on those early window of games they were fantastic sensational endings overtime thrillers games that were decided in the final minute of regulation as well divisional matchups all of that culminating we hoped in a sunday night football game for the first time this year in dallas texas at the star with the two highest scoring offenses from a season ago didn't really turn out that way last night on a Sunday, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers go on the road in Dallas and win 19 to 13. Kind of a lame ending, though, to a fantastic Sunday slate of 14 NFL games. And we'll go all around the Sunday slate as we look back at it. But of course, capped off last night in Dallas between the boys and the Bucks. And Tampa gets that 19 to 3 road win, easily covering as a two and a half point favorite. There were 15 points scored in the first half combined between these two teams all of them coming from five field goals only one touchdown in the game tossed by Tom Brady a one-handed reception by Mike Evans but the big story from this game really in the overnight hours after it ended last night on Sunday Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones telling reporters Dak Prescott injured his right throwing thumb and he will now be out as the timetable has been set Six to eight weeks. Dak expected to undergo surgery on this Monday, and he is out for six to eight weeks. A significant blow to the Dallas Cowboys after their season opening loss. We will look at how the odds now stack up for Dallas because they have moved back in a big way in pretty much every market out there to win their division in the NFC East, to be a contender in the NFC Championship race, and certainly in the Super Bowl as well. But in the quarterback comparison last night, it was year number 23 at the age of 45 for Tom Brady. And the Bucs were the highest passing offense last year in terms of passing play percentage. 66.5% of the Buccaneers' plays a season ago on the offensive side of the football came through the air. Not necessarily the case last night. Tom Brady, 18 of 27. He led the leagues in led the league last year in completions and attempts, but only 27 last night, well under that passing attempts prop. His passing yards prop was 274 and a hook. He finishes with 212 and only one passing touchdown, the only touchdown of the game going to Mike Evans. Mike Evans, however, over his receiving yards prop of 66 and a half, he finishes with five grabs for 71 yards. CeeDee Lamb on the other side, though, a lot expected out of this Dallas offense. We didn't necessarily see that last night, and now it only gets more pessimistic without Dak Prescott for the foreseeable future. Only 29 yards for CeeDee Lamb yesterday evening against the Buccaneers. The main story for Tampa's offense, Leonard Fournette, 21 carries, 127 yards, a big, big day for the man known as Playoff Lenny. So we mentioned how that odds movement has negatively negatively affected the Dallas Cowboys. We'll get to that in just a second. First, we welcome in our Sports Grid Radio audience here. The opening hour of the morning after, live right here on this Monday on Sports Grid. Sirius XM, Channel 159. All of our terrestrial radio affiliates now in the fold as well. I am Ben Stevens. Looking back on the first Sunday slate of the National Football League regular season in Week 1. Craziness early Kind of lame last night, honestly, on a Sunday night between the Buccaneers and the Cowboys. Tampa goes on the road, covering as a two-and-a-half point favorite, winning 19-3. to A total that came down, down, and down throughout the week, closing at 49 and a hook, stays well, well under. So, the main story from this game, though, was that quarterback comparison, and mainly for the Dallas Cowboys, a big quarterback injury Dak Prescott injuring his right throwing thumb he is now sidelined expected for six to eight weeks he will undergo surgery today and that timetable for his return around six to eight weeks the Cowboys entered this season tied for the fourth best odds to win an NFC championship at 10 to 1 that is no longer the case for the Dallas Cowboys all the way back 
to 26 to 1. As you see them, they are on the bottom of that right column. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, however, have their odds to win the conference grow shorter at plus 280. Everybody else moves back. The Green Bay Packers now tied for the second best odds with the Philadelphia Eagles at 6 to 1. And it was another bad start for Green Bay to open up the 2022 season. Last year, they got blown out by the Saints, 38 to 3. Yesterday, in a huge divisional matchup in Minnesota against the Vikings, it's Minnesota in control for all 60 minutes. 23 to 7, the win for the Vikings, who closed as a one and a half point favorite. And they cover that number. A total of 47 and a hook stays way under. So the Vikings flipped to the favorites for this game. And because of that victory, we see immediate movement in the odds to win an NFC North title. The Packers remain a favorite, but they were minus 155 entering the opener yesterday. Now plus 110. The Vikings only 20 cents behind at plus 130. These two teams don't play each other again until the second to last week of the regular season in Green Bay inside Lambeau Field. Donnie Wrightside joins the show up next to continue going around week one of the NFL. The early line. I just feel like the Washington Commanders at a plus 152 price really are getting overlooked. I don't understand the hatred for Carson Wentz. Now, let's not forget in 2017, which isn't 10 years ago, he was the single best player in the entire National Football League. The team is talented together. I know the defense might have been a little bit overhyped in the past, but it's still a solid overall bunch. You're not looking at the Washington Commanders and going, that team stinks on defense, they can't defend, because that's not the case. Only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. Anyone who is drafting Jefferson over Cup, I'm not going to tell you you're wrong. I don't think I would do it. There's just so, It's like the McCaffrey thing. It's like there's just something in drafting the guy who just scored 400 points. Like you should probably just do that again. And then even, even Chase as well. If Jamar Chase is one-on-one -on -one against the safety, he's coming down with that ball. He's knocking the safety to the ground, and he's scoring a touchdown. So for me, it's those three guys. The Sports Grid Network. A-Rod, Clemens, Pettit, Bonds, McGuire, Sosa. Get ready, because that soup is served ice cold. From a betting perspective for the 2022 NFL season, if I'm betting on the 49ers in the futures market, I want Jimmy G on this roster because that instantly becomes one of the best backups he's taken to the Niners to the Super Bowl. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on SportsGrid. The morning after. So we wanted to test the football knowledge of New Yorkers by identifying NFL team logos. I can't. The Patriots. No. Wait, 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 wait. This NFL team logo. Raiders. How'd you know? Because I can read. Hey, he can read. That's the, the Bulls, right? Close. Change one letter. The Rams? Who said you weren't good at it? That was great. I'm not put under pressure, but I'm a big football fan. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. They played last game. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Rogers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell, and coast to CBG, coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game penalty. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game Everyone. live I all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live win. prime oh, yeah, time. The, major, the PGA champion. In yeah. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid.
What a week one slate it was in the National Football League, especially that early window of games. We had divisional debuts, thrilling overtime games. Nobody wanted to make a field goal. We recap it all live right here as a new week begins on a Monday on the morning after on Sports Grid. I am Ben Stevens. DRS, Donnie Wrightside, joins the show right now. One of the co-hosts of The Early Line each and every weekday morning at 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Eastern Time. And the main host in that lead chair for The Money Line each and every weekday on Sports Grid Radio starting at 1 p.m. Eastern. DRS also loves playing Monday morning quarterback, sitting in the armchair, reviewing the weekend that was. Donnie, how was your first weekend of NFL action? Exciting. The hot takes were flowing. I loved every mm. minute of it. I stayed up past 9.30 p.m. multiple Woo. times. That's how you know I'm excited getting ready for the NFL season, Ben. If DRS is up past 8.30, yeah. 9 o'clock, Crazy. that means the Crazy. engines are revved. And we'll bring that energy here for you on this Monday morning. DRS, let's start with one of the more exciting games of the day. A divisional matchup in Cincinnati, the home of the reigning AFC champs, the Bengals, who closed DRS as more than a touchdown favorite, laying seven and a half at home against the Pittsburgh Steelers. But it's Pittsburgh who goes on the road, goes up late, has to battle and hang on against Cincy, who storms back in the second half. And then in overtime, the Steelers emerge victorious 23 to 20 but DRS the story of this game since he was down 17 to 6 at the half they storm back in the second half they score late just two seconds remaining a six yard TD strike from Joe Burrow to Jamar Chase and then two seconds left on the clock Evan McPherson money Mac as he's known steps out there to make an extra point games over since he comes back to win what a come from behind victory except Minka Fitzpatrick blocks the extra point So then we go to overtime, tied at 20-all. We start off in overtime with Chris Boswell missing a field goal. Then Evan McPherson misses a chip shot. And then Chris Boswell finally hits the game winner from 53 yards out DRS. And Pittsburgh wins outright as a a 7.5-point underdog. It was incredible all the way through. How about five turnovers there from the Cincinnati Bengals? None from the Pittsburgh Steelers. 432 yards gained for the Bengals. Only 267 from the Steelers. But they did this last year, Ben. Opening day, they went up and beat Buffalo on the road when everybody picked the Buffalo Bills to win that game fairly easily. Same thing with the Cincinnati Bengals. This was hovering around seven points. But I got to say, like sometimes I like to take some shots. And maybe it's the special teams coordinators. And I'm looking directly at the Pittsburgh Steelers. They said, well, Don, they came up big. They blocked the extra point. Why is it when you actually need to block an extra point, it seems like you can block the extra point. But the other 99 times that you line up where it's just a regular extra point, nobody gives maximum effort. Effort here, but Minka Fitzpatrick, a pick six and a blocked extra point. He was sensational. So nobody go back and look at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Why did you give up that first round draft pick for Minka Fitzpatrick? Because he's really good. Yeah, it worked out. Yeah, that Steelers defense looked apart yesterday, forcing five turnovers from Cincinnati, picking off Joe Burrow four separate times, and sacking Joe seven times in that game. TJ Watt in the Cincinnati backfield a ton. But some bad news for the Steelers following the victory. They fear it is a torn pectoral for T.J. Watt. He'll undergo MRIs today to see just how extensive that injury is. Najee Harris also leaving the game early. So the Bengals lose as a seven and a half point home favorite against the Steelers. The Ravens win as a six and a half point road favorite against the Jets. And because of that DRS, the Ravens odds as the favorites to win the AFC North even shorter on this Monday morning, plus 115. The Bengals were just 20 cents behind entry yesterday. They're now at plus 290, nearly $2 behind the flock. All right, let's continue rolling around the week one slate. And we go to Houston, Texas, where the biggest spread of the week, like the Bengals laying seven and a half at home against the Steelers, was the Indianapolis Colts as a seven and a half point favorite on the road against Houston. The Texans entering this season with the lowest win total available at only four and a half entering 2022. But the Texans do what they do best, the RS cover as an underdog. They don't win though, but neither do the Colts. A 20 
20 tie after we go to overtime. More missed field goals late in that extra session, DRS. And it's the Texans covering as a seven and a half point dog, but no team wins the opener in Houston. Come on, at home, opening day of 20 to three at the break. That's mm. got to be an automatic win. I don't care if it's the Houston Texans, but at the same time, that's a nice comeback for the Indianapolis Colts. 17 unanswered in the fourth quarter. But my whole question mark comes into this. Did we learn anything about Matt Ryan? No, he threw 50 times in that ball game. I was actually rooting because I like chaos here where you bring in Matt Ryan as your savior, score three points opening day and get roasted by the Houston Texans. That would have been a fantastic armchair quarterback Monday. But my question here comes from, we're going to talk about probably this game in a little bit, the New York Giants game. You had one coach say, yep. you know what? Let's set the tone on a team that maybe don't have the highest expectations on the season and they go for a two-point conversion and get it. Houston Texans, Lovey Smith, 50-yard line, fourth and three. <laughs> Throw a pass. You get the first down. You get a chance to make a field goal. That's going to carry you through the rest of the season, even if you don't get it, Ben, right? Fourth and three doesn't work out your way. Colts get it first down and kick a field goal themselves. Is anybody going to look back at the Houston Texans like, man, what a stupid move by Lovey Smith? No, I just don't understand the playing for the tie. Come on, Lovey. DRS, as I tweeted after the game, you can take Lovey Smith out of the Big Ten Conference. But you can't take the Big Ten Conference Big out win, of Lovey yeah. Smith. And there were some comparisons yesterday between the AFC South and the Big Ten West Division in college football because that's complete anarchy right now. And nobody looks all that great. And Lovey Smith, the former head coach in Champaign with Illinois, because no team DRS in the AFC South gets a victory yesterday. Mm -hmm. And two of those four teams, the Colts and the Texans, played against each other. The Jaguars lose on the road against the Commanders. The Titans lose at home as a five-and-a-half-point favorite against the, against the Giants. Brian Dayball showing that he has some of those you-know-whats and goes for two to win late on the road in Nashville. So because of it, DRS, although the Colts uninspiring as a seven and a half point favorite on the road against Houston, despite coming back from down 17 points early in the fourth quarter, remain the odds on favorites at minus 140. So we go from the AFC South to another divisional matchup in the NFC South. 27-26, the win for the Saints on the road in Atlanta, DRS, but again, much like Houston, who also had a win total of four and a half. That's what the Falcons had entering 2022. Atlanta was up 26 to 10 DRS early in that fourth quarter. And the Falcons do what the Falcons do. They can't close out a football game. The Saints don't cover as a five and a half point road favorite, but they win outright 27-26. Yeah, the Saints were bad just about the entire way and they end up winning this football game. You're right, another team at home up close to three scores here. Actually, it was two scores with the two extra two uh, two point conversions involved. And yeah. you still get beat here. Marcus Mariota, 215 yards in the air. How about him on the ground? 72 yards and a touchdown. Cordell Patterson, 22 for 120. You lose this game at home. It just shows you that witching hour in football is amazing <sighs> where you think you have a win and it disappears right before your eyes. Michael Thomas, by the way, back for the Saints for the first time in over a year and a half. Five grabs, 57 yards, over his receiving yards prop of 46 in a hook, and he finishes with two touchdowns as well. We had some Motown madness yesterday between the Eagles and the Lions. Philly in control for most of that second half. Detroit was down 17 DRS two times in that second half, but the Lions do what they always do. They fight back to make it a competitive game. They only lose by three, 38-35. Now, 18 games DRS for Detroit under their head coach in Dan Campbell. They have been booked as an underdog in all 18 of those contests. They are now 12 and six against the spread. Good teams win, great teams cover, and the fighting Dan Campbells, they can bite some kneecaps and they keep games close. We'll continue to go around the National Football League with DRS live right here on TMA on Sports Grid up next. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. In the landscape of college sports, 
Some things remain the same. College and football the today. Of Alabama in winning SEC championships. It's the island of misfit toys. Fantasy sports so today. You have to understand that. Can they survive those first four games? Two two Pro two football two. today. This franchise, they are comical. Now, I'm not making light of the injuries. This is a brutal rash. In-game live you can take all the points. access. You can take the money line. And the sports book, if you shop around, you can get it at 133. But um, that's my best bet on the night, Joe. So that's the one I'm going big. In I'm game go. live, prime time. I'm a bit nostalgic. I'm going with an international, Jason Day and Sergio Garcia. But boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination? Get the winning edge only on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. Pharrell, coast to coast. Bills 11 and a half, Colts 10 and a half, Ravens 10 and a half, Chiefs 10 and a half. The low team on the totem pole, Scotty, in the AFC, the Texans at four and a half. I think the Bills can win 14 games. What else matters? What do I care about all these teams that can't win five games? Uh, if you can't win five games, I'm not talking about you. How does that sound? And that's the way it's going. The Sports Grid Network. The morning after. A majority of minor leaguers have backed the MLBPA to join the union. The Players Association has now formally asked Major League Baseball for voluntary recognition. A lot of people said that this was too big for the union. The union wanted to deal with major leaguers, not minor leaguers. That's not the case. This voluntary recognition is a big deal. And Major League Baseball will continue then to have more of an integrated system. The Sports Grid Network. football giants in the late rain down in Tennessee. Does anybody think this game is going to be a shootout 35-34? Raise your hands. Absolutely not. Come home. Back home to the birds. But again, the thing is, I know we have to add these stupid caveats of we're Eagles fans, but you out there know how talented this football team is. It absolutely could be their season. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. Your week one Sunday slate recap from the National Football League in the season beginning continues live right here on a Monday morning on the morning after. It's Ben Stevens and Donnie Wright side with you again for a second consecutive segment. DRS, one of the games that I was most looking forward to in that late afternoon slate yesterday happened in Los Angeles at SoFi Stadium. The Chargers and the Raiders, a divisional picture of what we expect to be the most competitive division in all of football within that AFC West. L.A. was a three and a half point home favorite against the Las Vegas Raiders and the Chargers end up covering winning 24 to 19. The second highest total of the weekend and over under pregame that ended at 52 and a half stays well under and DRS although the Chargers covered as a three and a half point favorite the Raiders did make it a game late they had an opportunity to go down the field for a game tying or even game go ahead drive but it's the Chargers defense that stands up and their newly acquired Khalil Mack three sacks in his Chargers debut LA gets the win 24 to 19. Yes, and here's the difference in professional football. How many times do we look at it? If you can win the turnover margin by, like, one, you're going to win a good portion of your football games. If you win the turnover margin by three, as the Chargers did, you put yourself in a great position. Now, look at the way that game played out, Ben, heading down into the last drive of the game with the Raiders with a legitimate chance to drive down and score a touchdown and win that game. You're just not going to win if your quarterback throws three interceptions and the other quarterback, Justin Herbert, goes 279 and three touchdowns and no interceptions. 
You can't make up for those mistakes. And this is probably a microcosm of Derek Carr's career. So, so talented at times, but so, so boneheaded at times as well. And that cost him a win yesterday. Not only three interceptions from Derek Carr, also sacked five times by that Chargers front. A defense that needed to improve after last season in 2021, at least in game number one of 2022, a much better start. And Justin Herbert was sensational DRS, as you mentioned, for the LA Chargers yesterday. You see that stat line there, 26 of 34, 279 passing yards, and three scores. So the Chargers get the win in week number one, 24 to 19 covering as a three and a half point favorite. And the Chargers DRS enter this year with optimism to finally knock the Chiefs off their perch atop the AFC West. Kansas City has won this division six consecutive seasons. So all good for LA yesterday. And as things change for the Chiefs, no Tyreek Hill now, a new look offense perhaps for Kansas City, Things also remain the same, as Patrick Mahomes reminded us yesterday. A huge day for Mahomes and the Chiefs in the desert opener against the Cardinals. Kansas City wins 44-21 on the road, easily covering as a five-and-a-half-point favorite. DRS Casey almost goes over the largest total of the weekend, 53-and-a-half by themselves, because Patrick Mahomes was sensational. That stat line you see there. 30 of 39, 360 yards, and five touchdowns yesterday. The Chiefs, a big victory to open up the season. Yeah, for me, the most significant win yesterday that impressed me the most, the Kansas City Chiefs, 44-21 over the Arizona Cardinals. And Ben, quite frankly, it really wasn't even that close. I always like to say, if you have a running mate in a game like the Cardinals, let's just say they were going tit for tack there with the Kansas City Chiefs, you would have been able to see the Kansas City Chiefs probably score 60 points, Patrick Mahomes with seven touchdown passes and 500 yards. They were incredible, and I just wanted to see them without Tyreek Hill, and I got my wish here. There's going to be no stop on the Kansas City Chiefs, almost like they didn't even miss a beat. Now, the question marks are going to be for the Arizona Cardinals and how they respond for the rest of the season. Yep. They're down a couple wide receivers. I get that. But they were blown off the field. Now, 44 to 21 wasn't even as close, even if that margin wasn't close at all, Ben. Some late scores late for Arizona, but that really didn't matter for the game overall. A blowout victory for KC. Travis Kelsey, still a member of Kansas City's organization, over a buck 20 receiving yesterday. Clyde Edwards Alaire, he has two receiving touchdowns as well. And Patrick Mahomes finishes with five. So DRS, no movement on the Chiefs price following yesterday. Still the favorites to win the AFC West at plus. 155 but the chargers move up slightly in the division plus 195 now only 40 cents behind kansas city the broncos on monday night football in seattle tonight plus 270 and the raiders move back slightly from seven to one in the preseason odds now 10 to one after a divisional loss week number one on the road in los angeles the chiefs and the chargers play each other in just four days from now to open up week number two on a Thursday night. That will be a big picture for a preview at the top of the AFC West. And Josh Allen remains the NFL MVP favorite at plus 450. But Patrick Mahomes now the second best odds by himself, a dollar and a half behind at six to one. And Justin Herbert there with the third best odds at plus 750. So plenty of offense from Kansas City yesterday. Very little offense, DRS. From the New England Patriots on the road in South Beach in a divisional matchup to start as well against the Dolphins. And we didn't really expect to see all that much offense from the Pats. And that's what we got yesterday. The Dolphins win 20-7. to The Mike McDaniel era now in Miami off to a perfect start against Bill Belichick. The Dolphins DRS easily covering as a three and a half point favorite. So a good win for Tyreek Hill in his debut day with Tua Tungabailoa as his quarterback, but much more questions on the other side, DRS, for me, about the Patriots and where that offense goes moving forward. 
Yeah, I don't know where it goes moving forward, but it's a good start to actually get an offensive coordinator in the building, Bill Belichick, if you're listening to the mm. show, which hopefully you are. Let's not hire a defensive coordinator and a special teams coordinator, both failed head coaches, to somehow resurrect your offense, which you don't like your quarterback throwing the forward pass. Now, having said that, was anybody surprised yesterday? You see that final score at 20-7. to 7. Maybe the Dolphins, I thought, would score a little bit more. But then again, you're only a product of your environment, Ben. If you look on the other side and like, man, this team can't move the football, you're not going to press your offense into overdrive. Just don't make the big mistake here. Two attack by Loa, one touchdown, no interceptions, QBR rating of a right. 78, which is actually very good in the passer rating, over 100. This is exactly what I expected. The Dolphins to win and win going away and also expected the New England Patriots to struggle in offense, which they've done every day, it seems like, from OTAs through training camp. I don't know how it gets better because the New England Patriots yeah. aren't built for explosion plays where, oh, it just didn't work out our way. Guys were wide open. No, they're more likely a 10-play, 75-yard drive in order to get a touchdown as opposed to where you can hit him with a deep shot here for the Miami Dolphins with Waddle and also Tyree Kill. Bad things, bad things on the horizon for the New England Patriots. It's a really good point, DRS. Tua, 270 yesterday and a touchdown. Tyreek Hill, 94 yards in his Dolphins debut. Jalen Waddle, a receiving score as well. Mac Jones, 21 of 30, 213 yards, a touchdown and an interception. But after the game, DRS, has injured his back. We're not exactly sure what the timetable looks like. We'll get updates throughout this week. The Pats on the road week two in Pittsburgh against those Steelers. Right now, Pittsburgh a slight home underdog. But if Mac Jones, maybe the only consistency New England's offense had entering the season, is not there, so many questions about that offense. Apparently, there's an offensive mind that might be in need of a new job that might be leaving Lincoln, Nebraska. Just saying, Scott Frost, if you have any hope of maybe coaching again, New England could be on your radar. So the Dolphins now, DRS, also minus 120 to make the postseason. They were plus money entering with those make playoff odds as this season got underway let's continue going around the nfl here week number one of that sunday slate in one of the games drs that had the most storylines entering the baker bowl in carolina between the panthers and the browns of course baker mayfield against his former team all that revenge game buildup. could the panthers do it they closed drs as a slight one and a half point favorite the line flipped past zero twice in the past 72 hours but it's the browns on the road, a late field goal wins it. Cleveland wins outright as a one-and-a-half-point underdog in Carolina yesterday, DRS. Yeah, get used to some of these games here for the Cleveland Browns moving forward because Jacoby Brissett, 147 yards in the air, one touchdown, no interceptions. That's probably the, as good as it's going to get. He actually threw the ball 34 times as well. But the one thing we did know, that backfield is so, so talented with that offensive line for mm -hmm. Cleveland, you know, between Chubb and Hunt, just really, you know, close to 200 yards on the ground, but also adding in 24 yards, receiving in a touchdown there for Kareem Hunt. But let's take a look at the Carolina Panthers side. He let this one get away. And the thing that I was most disappointed in, not the way that Baker Mayfield had to have, you know, a crazy fourth quarter to get them back in, which he's talented enough to do. But the fact of the matter right. is you were in the red zone with the first and 10 with around two minutes to go, two timeouts for the Cleveland Browns, and you ran the ball three times and you kicked the field goal. Now, not to say that's not the smart thing to do, but you don't trust Baker Mayfield. Throw a touchdown pass. Run that bad boy in. You win the game right there, and you played for the field goal, which means you played to lose and you lost. It was a very slow start for Baker Mayfield yesterday. The stats at the end of the game, not all that bad, but it was not pretty early in Carolina. They were down by 13 midway through that third quarter, had to storm back in the fourth. They do, but it's Cade York who wins the day. DRS on a Sunday across the NFL where we saw field goal kickers look really, really bad. It was Cade York, the rookie, yeah. bombing yeah. a 58-yarder for the Browns that got them that season opening win 26 to 24. So Baker Mayfield goes down in his first game against his former team. And that's something that I spoke about last week, a little bit DRS is the Panthers became the favorites in this game with all the storylines we had entering week one, but there's still a team that entered this season with a six and a half win total and the under had the juice and Matt rule might be a coach on the hot seat. So that's all that you need to put into context and perspective for Carolina and Baker Mayfield the rest of the way here in 2022. All right, we're going to talk some college football next with Donnie Wright's side. Big changes across the country. Scott Frost is now looking for a new job. He has been fired by Nebraska. 
the reaction and a new AP poll in college football with a new team at the top up next on the morning app. be the next daily fantasy millionaire no matter what you watch or where you play learn from the world's best dfs players lineup building tools expert projections and advanced stats change the way you play the game dominate the competition dailyroto.com the player's choice the morning after you look at the green bay side of things ben and it's actually incredible what matt lafleur has been doing with this team in the regular season three straight seasons with 13 wins so i don't know why anybody would be taking the 10 and a half, 10 and a half number on them with the minus 160 juice when you can go to alt line of 11 and a half and get plus money on it immediately and if you really think the packers are going to win this division and and the vikings don't get you know nine or ten wins um then i think that's the number that you got to look the sports grid network the early line. I got the Denver Broncos oh. winning the Super Bowl this year. Yes, it's year one for Russell Wilson in Denver. It was year one for Matthew Stafford in L.A. The offensive line is solid. It's not gangbusters, but it is solid. Let Russ cook. And the weapons are there to cook. What about the idea that whoever wins this division is going to need 12 wins, maybe 13 wins, which gives you a legitimate chance if you're high on one of these teams to maybe be the number Only one seed. on Sports Grid. And now you're starting to see these younger players starting to develop, younger players starting to grow. And we're watching these Mariners who may get in the postseason. Talk about the bad beach all the time. That's a good win, you know, because it it was one that I don't know if it was the right side. Watching the game and then watching the way it played out. The Bostonian versus the book only on Sports Grid. Sports professor Rick Haro into the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your Sports News Minute. Is betting in trouble revenue-wise in Colorado? Well, all the naysayers were saying, look, the shine is off the rose, whatever metaphor you want to use, the revenues aren't there. They had summer reports that were incredibly low. But look, after the avalanche and the Stanley Cup and with baseball flaming out with the Rockies, there wasn't a whole lot to bet on in the summer. And now that even preseason is back, take a look at the numbers. Over $300 million again and up about 17%. And everybody seems to think that things are right, especially heading into the lion's share of the football season. And this is the most important thing in Colorado. There's only $200,000 in one month for the state's water implementation fund. They need water. Money was going to go to that. Over a million last month and more to come. Sports Professor Rick Haro, Sports News Minute. Football is so bad, both in the National Football League and across the country in college football. Welcome back here to the morning after live on this Monday on Sports Grid and Sirius XM Channel 159. He is Donnie Wrightside. I am Ben Stevens. And as DRS was sitting down on his Sunday watching Red Zone or maybe just the Eagles take on the Lions, as I was sitting down DRS and watching the start of the National Football League Week 1 Sunday slate, about 20 minutes into the games, we got some breaking news. Scott Frost has been fired as the head coach of Nebraska football just three games in to this 2022 college football season into his fifth year at the helm in Lincoln after restructuring his contract at the end of last year to bring him back for year number five DRS despite a 0.341 win percentage in his first four years and 20 days ahead of October 1st a significant day because his buyout would have dropped in half by seven and a half million dollars from 15 mil to seven and a half mil 
DRS, some big news out of Lincoln, Nebraska. Scott Frost is now looking for a new job, and the Huskers are looking for a new football coach. Yeah, don't feel bad. He's got a ton of money, but you know it's sort of going off the rails, Ben. When they renegotiate your contract so they can fire you a little bit easier and then don't even wait for the easy part to come in and spend any money. Sort of like get out of here. But the problem here with Nebraska is this is a team that's rich in tradition. Dr. Tom Osborne, those years where they were running ground and pound and winning national championships, they're still trying to find their identity. But I think we can agree, talking over the break, there wasn't a more perfect match in college football from pulling Scott Frost from UCF back to Nebraska to rescue that yep. franchise, if you will. Yep. And it just didn't work out. So now when you're talking about like, hey, is Lance Leipold going to make the move over and a couple other names? They just don't hit home like it did. It seemed like a grand slam hire at the time where if it worked out, he'd be able to walk on water. Talking about Scott Frost for the rest of his days in Lincoln gets fired unceremoniously. And you're almost left with, well, what's next? Like, it's not going to be a monster hire it's almost one of those guys that's going to resurrect the program just to be back to normal which is a shame here i thought frost was a home run and it just didn't work out and you see those numbers right there the final numbers of four plus years for scott frost at the helm in lincoln 16 and 31 overall 10 and 26 mm. 10 and 26 against big 10 opponents 6 and 18 against his own division and as we saw once again on saturday night in lincoln inside memorial stadium another close defeat but a defeating feeling for nebraska once more 5 and 22 in one score games because drs on saturday night as a 23 and a half point home favorite against georgia southern nebraska loses 45 to 42 and although the buyout goes into effect where it lessens by seven and a half million dollars on October 1st that was the final straw that was it for Scott Frost in Lincoln to echo DRS's point a point I have made numerous times here on the morning after I started my professional broadcast career in Omaha Nebraska covering the Huskers first and foremost I was anchoring DRS our studio coverage in early December of 2018 when Scott Frost was introduced as Nebraska's new head coach and I uttered the words that I will never forget if it is not Scott Frost to return Nebraska to its glory that all of Husker Nation so strongly desires, I'm not sure there's a coach out there that can. He was the prodigal son returned home, a native of Wood River, Nebraska, who led the Huskers to their last national championship in 1997 as their starting quarterback, led UCF to an undefeated 13-0 season in 2018. Seemed to be not just the hottest coach that Nebraska could go higher, but one of the hottest young coaches in all of college football, and Nebraska landed him. It didn't work out. That's why it's so hard to judge head coaching hires in any sport on paper because that one seemed as good as it gets but now after four plus years and just three games into this season nebraska needs a new head coach the interim coach is mickey joseph the wide receivers coach that came over this past offseason from lsu the huskers have a huge rivalry game in lincoln inside memorial stadium drs on saturday afternoon against an old school foe in oklahoma the line opened up in the sooners favor at seven and a half points it is now 13 and a half in favor of OU on the road. All of this followed a crazy, crazy Saturday in college football where Nebraska was one of four teams, Donnie, across the country that was booked as a 17 and a half point favorite or higher and lost the football game outright. One of two Big Ten teams to suffer that fate. Wisconsin, a top 20 team, a 17 and a half point home favorite against Washington State. Well, Wazoo goes on the road in Madison and beats the Badgers 17 to 14. A big, big win for the Cougs. So all of this DRS reflected in what was a crazy day of college football. We saw Texas A&M go down, Notre Dame go down. Craziness in college football DRS that we saw spill over into the NFL slate as well. No, we certainly did. It was wild because you saw teams that aren't supposed to lose these games. You know, even getting ready for a big matchup. Texas A&M and Miami next week. Watch out. Yeah, well, you got to beat out yep. state in order to make that a monster matchup. That's a massive letdown. Also, Notre Dame. Marcus Freeman, we know he hit the recruiting trail very hard here, but 0-3 now as a head coach in Notre Dame mm -hmm. is certainly not going to fly with a terrible loss to Marshall at home. And again, 
This gets back to the mode where you have parity now, it seems like, in college football, where Alabama probably should have lost to Texas in that game. Yep. Expand that college football playoff. It will be sensational. Please, sooner than later, let's get that 12 in there, Ben. And we saw that all come to a head week number two. And because of some of the things that DRS just mentioned and the outcomes we saw on Saturday, the new AP poll looks a lot different this week in the top 25. Teams falling out of the rankings, but mainly when you look at the top. Georgia is now the number one team in the country ahead of Alabama. The dogs off to a perfect start. They beat Furman on Saturday. whoop de doo They do not cover as a really large favorite. But because of Georgia's dominance in week number one against Oregon, the dogs seem to be that dominant force. Ohio State remains at number three. Michigan is fourth in the country. And Clemson rounds out the top five. So DRS, the rankings following the odds or maybe vice versa in that statement because you now have Georgia not only as the number one team in the land but the favorites to win a national championship plus 180 20 cents ahead of Alabama is that how DRS evaluates the college football landscape that Georgia should be the betting favorite at the moment Georgia should be the betting favorite at the moment, but also let's not forget, Ben, those Miami Hurricanes, they should be fighting for a number one spot overall. What do you think about that action here? But no, just to be serious, Alabama, if you're going to get tripped up with a chance where you're three, Alabama didn't come in that game, bet three and a half point favorites. They were supposed to go in there and wipe the field with the Texas Longhorns. They didn't do that. They deserve to drop down. Now, are they going to drop out of the top four? Never, unless they lose a football game. But I love the fact that Georgia now sits one. They deserve it. They do. Absolutely so. They do deserve that. And the reason that Alabama moves back to number two as well, they go on the road in Austin, brunch time in Texas against those Mm -hmm. Longhorns. And for a majority of the game, DRS, Texas outplays Alabama. But we saw some of that magnificence of Bryce Young, the reigning Heisman winner, ducking under a sack late in the game, scampering out for 15-plus yards to set Bama up for that game-winning field goal, and they survive outright on the road 20-19 to over Steve Sarkeesian and the Texas Longhorns. But as the RS mentioned, especially what we do here on the morning after and across Sports Grid, it wasn't just an outright victory for the number one team on the road. It was supposed to be a runaway win a 21 and a half point favorite drs that's what alabama was by the time we got to kick on saturday afternoon in austin what stood out to you most about that game drs between the tide and the longhorns I think the Longhorns, you can't say like Texas is back just yet because they did lose the game. There's no real moral victories coming out of that. But if you can take a moral victory, it was the fact that you lost Quinn Ewers. And the minute he went out of a football game, most people that were watching, and I'm not really all into college football betting just yet. Usually like to wait a couple weeks. Who's not pressing the trigger here on Alabama to absolutely roll Texas at that point? But Hudson Card comes in, holds it down, and quite frankly, Texas should have won that football game. But that shows me a lot meaning. Sarkeesian has the ear of this football team they weren't just going to take it on the chin they didn't even though they lost their star quarterback I like what I saw from Texas I did I did as well and I don't I think defensively DRS that's really where I was impressed by the Longhorns mm-hmm. not a great rushing defense last year the 20th worst in the country and they limited Jameer Gibbs in that game for Alabama they limited a lot of what the Tide wanted to do offensively it was that Texas defense that stood tall by the way Quinn Ewers An injury to that left shoulder, a separated shoulder messing with the clavicle, the collarbone. He will be out four to six weeks. So some more bad news, unfortunately, for Texas. We said Alabama now the second best price to win a national championship, but some more movement in the rest of that odds board. Michigan all the way up from 80 to 1 in the preseason DRS to 60 to 1 to 50 to 1 entering week number two. Now 20 to 1 on the FanDuel Sportsbook, the fourth-ranked team in the country. But we saw some teams in that AP poll move up and move down. Despite the loss, Texas goes from unranked to number 21 in the country. That's the beauty of college football. Notre Dame, though, was ranked in the top 10, and they start off this season 0-2. In fact, DRS, as you mentioned, the first three games of the Marcus Freeman era all losses. The only coach in the history of Notre Dame football to start off 0-3, dating back to last year's Fiesta Bowl against Oklahoma State. It's Marshall on the road in South Bend DRS 
winning as a 20 and a half point favorite or underdog rather outright a bad bad start for Notre Dame season no, it certainly is. And also, maybe you're thinking that another guy in the media who was a head football coach in the professional ranks is saying, hey, Notre Dame, I've been there before. Why don't you give me a phone call? I'd like to be your head coach. And that's Urban Meyer. Now, look, it's real early. The buyout is massive. You got to give a young coach a chance to you know, earn his stripes. But at the same time, this is Notre Dame football. You are a billion-dollar franchise here. You can't be learning on the job, Ben, when you have those stakes that high like Notre Dame is. They need wins, and they need wins now. DRS, I think it's just a reset of expectation. I'm trying to make sure I'm not doing this incorrect. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay, Notre Dame is all the way back to 1,000 to 1 to win the college football playoff national championship. The reason I was doing that on air, I'm scrolling and looking and looking. Notre Dame has yeah. the same odds to win a national championship as Arizona, Duke, Northern Illinois, Kansas, Western Kentucky, Toledo, just to name a few. Notre Dame entered this season with the ninth best odds at 60 to 1 to win a national championship. It's that reset of expectation. We saw some teams, DRS, enter the top 25. Oregon fell all the way out after that season opening hammer of a loss against Georgia. They're back up despite a win over Eastern Washington because they're into that number 25 spot, setting up a big matchup this week in Eugene against BYU. The Cougs hold on late Saturday night, Provo primetime against BYU in overtime to win 26 to 20 and cover as a three and a half point favorite. True wildness that we have seen so far the first two weeks of this college football season. A crazy Saturday in college football. A wild early portion of our Sunday in the NFL, and DRS was here for it all. Donnie, as always, we appreciate your time and your insight. Thank you very much. Armchair quarterback, baby. Get used to it. We got a long way to go, Ben. So much fun being with you today. A long football season ahead. Fade the Public is up next. But I think truly this is where we're going to find out whether Tua is the guy in Miami. And obviously there's a guy named Lamar Jackson that's sort of now waiting in the wings to be a free agent in a couple of weeks. As bizarre as it was, it was Superman realizing that he's Clark Kent and he walks the earth with, earth with other humans. So um, I don't make too much of it. I think Anthony Joshua now has to embark on a new path for his career. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. Kyler Murray is one of these players to me that if you acquired Kirk Cousins and a wide receiver for Kyler Murray, that's pretty good. At the end of the day, I think there's going to be some ups and downs, and I think there's still a lot of uncertainty of the stability of this Cardinals offense. And if Hopkins doesn't come back for six weeks, you don't have Rondell Moore, and Marquise Brown is the go-to guy, I don't know what becomes of Kyler Murray's value. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. Green Bay's got bigger issues than that. Not only do they have young wide receivers, their number one Alan Lazard out. Tanya coming back from an ACL, their tight end is not near 100%. And the book in tackles, David Bakhtiari, this is almost two years, he's barely played. Elton Jenkins coming back from the ACL. They've both been limited in practice. And even if they play, you know, their scores are lower there on offense. And so it's not just Lazard. The Sports Grid Network. If Clemson wins the ACC once again with only a single loss on the record, I guarantee you the Clemson Tigers will be a member of the college football playoff this year. Right, taking the over on that one, to be quite honest with you, there's a lot of questions in Houston that they're still trying to figure out. It's a young team, and I think it's going to be kind of an up and down year for them. The morning after, only on Sports Grid. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. 
Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid. Rounding out our number one morning after live right here on this monday on sports grid and sirius xm channel 159 it's the home for sports grid radio on sirius xm all across the spiz grizz network as well that's sports grid and i am ben stevens of course it's a football monday looking back on the weekend that was across the nfl college football our takeaways from it all and a big takeaway last night in big d dallas at the star the Cowboys lose their season opener against the Buccaneers for a second straight season. 19-3 last night. Not pretty offensively. Made even worse for the Cowboys on this Monday morning. In the overnight hours, owner Jerry Jones confirms Dak Prescott injures his right throwing thumb. He will have surgery on this Monday, and he is sidelined now. The timetable estimated around six to eight weeks. So where does Dallas go from here? That's what we asked you around a specific quarterback that might be available in the marketplace in Fade the Public. Now, here's the interesting thing. Although Jimmy Garoppolo restructured his deal to sign a one-year contract with the San Francisco 49ers, does not mean he is beholden to that Niners organization there were some trade clauses and wording in there in the language of that contract that if both parties could agree jimmy g the niners and the potential trade partner jimmy g could be traded this year ahead of the trade deadline so without Dak prescott for the next six to eight weeks should dallas try to make a move for jimmy garoppolo that's what we asked you and fade the public should the cowboys trade for jimmy garoppolo yes or no two simple choices and most of the public, about 68%, saying yes, the Cowboys should make a move for Jimmy G. The Cowboys have worked all the way back in the NFC Championship market from 10 to 1 before this year got underway, now to 26 to 1. But of course, there is talent in Dallas. Maybe Jimmy G could help. We come back for our number two in the morning after live on this Monday. Up next. 